Double team. After image. Projecting oneself across space and time to make your opponents miss. When it's done in anime, it's the coolest thing ever. But apparently when you try to use that in Pokemon, everybody gets really upset. Like really, really upset. Oh, your run is now completely invalid because you used the double team move. You cheap sucker you. Here I thought I was being like Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, but no. Based on the comments that I got on my last videos where I used double team, I was told that any challenge that uses double team is completely invalid. The fact that this even exists proves that we should never use it. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. So today we are going to test double team and see how strong it really is by using a bell sprout. And to do that, I did multiple tests. So in my very first test run, just to prove that the strategy I'm going to use is possible, I beat the entire game with a bell sprout using only physical moves. It took me an hour and 50 minutes. So with that being done, now it's time to try bell sprout with double team one time. I ran through the entire game. I finally got to the champion here at about two hours and 40 minutes but we suffered a lucky hit from the cloister taking us out. It was a failed attempt, but we saw a few things. Double Team did speed up certain parts of the run. Okay, well now let's go back with Sleep Powder and Growth, and let's see if Sleep Tactics have any different results. I played through the entire game again, and this time at about 2 hours and 55 minutes, I was able to beat the game. So with that being done, we can now get into the run and see if double team or sleep tactics are more overpowered. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to run this challenge where we are going to use only Bellsprout. We're actually not going to have any wild Pokemon. One Bellsprout will use double team. The other Bellsprout will use growth and sleep powder. The double team Bellsprout will not use a fourth move. Let's see if this is possible, and let's see how close their times finally are. So, loading up the game, we are going to name our two characters, DT and Sleep. We're just using the exact same names, so this part shouldn't be resulting in a big time difference by putting in different characters. And then we're going to name our uh, Bell Sprouts according to their strategy. So, the double team Bell Sprout will be called DT Sprout and the bell sprout that is using the sleep powder and growth strategy will be sg sprout here we go we have the two loaded up we have our times pretty close to synced up at this point so let's see which one is faster to get through the entire game here starting off in the professor oaks lab rival one battle we can see that this is pretty simple we just use Vine Whip. It's the only attack that we have available at this point. That's fine because our Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout doesn't know Growth at this point. Here at about two and a half minutes, we get the first run at Brock with the double team strategy. And we take him out. It's just easy one hits on both of his Pokemon. Just coming up behind that is the Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout basically doing the same thing, but we're really looking at a difference of seconds here, guys. This section is pretty easy for both. Okay, so now we are moving on to Misty, and Double Team is getting there faster than any of the runs so far. In only seven minutes, we've made it all the way to Misty, and here with a time of about seven minutes and 20 seconds, we are going to be able to get through her. Like that first one was a fail, that's fine. But one more attempt, it's just about luck and ranges. We just need to not take attacks from her. And here we go. We are getting her health down and done and done. We have gotten through, but you can see that Sleep Powder Bellsprout is still struggling with Jesse and James. Here, Double Team Bellsprout is already making its way to the rival two and this is not a perfectly consistent battle especially because we can get knocked out by the spiro at the beginning but once we get the setup we are able to get through this battle fairly easily just using rap 
in order to take all of these Pokemon down. So with that being done, we are going to be able to move on to the rest of the game while Sleep Powder Bellsprout is still struggling against Jesse and James back in Mount Moon. So it's very close getting through, but here we go. We take out the Eevee and Double Team Bellsprout can move on. So it's a couple minutes later when finally Sleep Powder Bellsprout makes its way to Misty and gets a shot at her. Sleep is really good though for helping us set up because we can just put her to sleep while we use Vine Whip over and over and over again. Don't even use any growths here and we get through on the first attempt. So at this point, there's a starting to be a little bit of a gap, about three minutes between the two runs. But this is still anybody's race. So moving on to the next section, we have our Sleep Powder Bellsprout now fighting rival two. This actually goes much smoother than the Double Team Bellsprout because we just put Spirit to sleep and then we can wrap it down and every Pokemon, we don't really have to worry quite as much as long as we can get sleep off on them. But it's still Double Team Bellsprout that has the advantage. Already, it's made its way down to Rival 3 and Double Team is making this fairly easy. We are all the way to the Sandshrew. We're just using Wrap in order to get through this fight. We are no longer really using Vine Whip. Vine Whip was only for Brock and Misty, and there we go. Double Team Bellsprout has gotten the cut HM and is making its way to Lieutenant Surge. Shortly behind, we have the Sleep Powder Bellsprout, now fighting Rival 2, or sorry, Rival 3, and it's making quick work of him too. There's not a whole lot of difficulty here. And we did use Vine Whip, but we didn't set up any growths. So it's in the rules of the strategy. We can use Vine Whip, but we can't use growth together with it because that would give too much of an advantage to having growth. But here, at about the time that we're leaving the SSN, Double Team Bellsprout is already fighting Lieutenant Surge and takes him down with, with Rap. So there we go, and we've also learned Acid, a new attacking move that we can use. It takes a couple more minutes for the Sleep Powder Bellsprout to finally get a run where it can beat Lieutenant Surge. The problem was that when we don't get Sleep to connect, or when it wakes up and it uses a move like Mega Kick on us because it outspeeds, we can get knocked out in one shot there. So the fact that Double Team was preventing us from getting hit by those kind of low accuracy moves made Double Team much, much faster there. So at this point, we have opened up a gap of about three minutes between the two runs. And we'd have to see, can Sleep Powder catch up? Because Double Team is just kind of running through Rock Tunnel, even here against the Self-Destruct Hiker. Double Team makes it super easy because they can't hit us with, with self-destruct. So the Double Team Bellsprout is now already all the way to Rival 4, and it's making quick work of him because his all of his team takes multiple turns to knock us out. So by setting up Double Team, we're really just making ourselves super survivable here they can't knock us out quickly enough. So we can see that at the time that Sleep Powder Bellsprout makes its way to the self-destruct hiker, the Double Team Bellsprout is already making its way to Erica. And that's a huge gap that's starting to open up because with Sleep Powder, it doesn't help us dodge the self-destruct. So we actually have to get them to stay asleep and get them in wrap and keep them there long enough to win the fight. We finally get through at about 25, almost 26 minutes. Here at about the same time, we are fighting Erica with the double team Bellsprout. And this fight goes incredibly easy because her team really can't do that much to us and Acid is neutrally effective against Weepin' Bell and Gloom. So here on the first attempt, we just blow through her. No problem whatsoever. 
double team might actually be more overpowered than I thought it was. And we're definitely seeing that in some of these early fights. Now, Sleep Powder Bellsprout has made its way to Lavender Tower and is fighting Rival 4. The key here is putting the Fero to sleep, but Fero will only use Mirror Move. So if we attack the Fero and it wakes up and uses Mirror Move, it's going to attack us with the same move. That being said, after we've gotten all of our setup done, it's easy to blow through the rest of the team. The badge boosts that we have in attack at this point make Acid really, really strong against everything except the Sandshrew, basically. And we can basically just knock all of these Pokemon out in just a few hits. So, there we have it. We are starting to catch up with Sleep Powder, but... The double team Bellsprout is now fighting Giovanni. And we don't have a move like Vine Whip to use on his Onyx. So instead, what we're doing is we are putting it, or we are using double team, and then getting all of our badge boosts and wrapping it down. And it's not a fast strategy, but it does work because we can outspeed these rocks. And Acid is really good because Acid has a chance to lower defense, meaning that each successive hit gets stronger and stronger whenever their defense is lowered. So double team is through Giovanni, and now Sleep Powder Bellsprout is finally fighting Erica. This goes reasonably well because we're able to put her Pokemon to sleep and then just use Acid on them. So we're not losing any time on this battle. We get through this fight fairly easily on the first attempt because as long as they're asleep, they can't do anything back to us. So here we have been Erica with both of these, but we can see that the gap is growing. Yeah, almost four minutes now between the two runs. And keep in mind that this is like 10 times speed, guys. So this is not like four minutes of game time. No, this is more like... 30 or 40 minutes of game time between these two runs right now. Here we can see that Double Team Bellsprout is already at the top of the Pokemon Tower taking on Jesse and James. And it's doing just fine here because it doesn't take a whole lot of hits from them. It did get paralyzed by Glare, but that's just fine. Here at the time that Sleep Powder Bellsprout is fighting Giovanni in the Rocket Game Corner, Double Team Bellsprout is already starting to make its way to Rival 5. That is just insane. Think about how much of the game happened in between there. And Sleep Powder Bellsprout is having a tough time with this fight because it needs to keep the opponent asleep long enough in order to take them out. At the same time, Double Team Bellsprout has just picked up and a very important move, Swords Dance, which is going to enable it to boost the power of its attacks. And that is going to possibly make Rival 5 doable at this point. So here it's taking its first attempt at Rival 5, using Double Team to set up, and then it's going to go into Swords Dance and use Acid. Now we don't want to set up all of our Double Teams at this point because we're going to level up against the Magneton. That's something I found in my testing. So instead, we want to set up just a few of the double teams there on the Sand Slash, and then save the rest of our badge boosts for after we get to Magneton. But there you can see it got through on the first attempt. That never happened in any of my runs outside of this one, getting through on the first attempt against Rival 5. That's a mix of what I learned in previous runs and just insane luck for this version of the Double Team Bellsprout. It is blowing through the game so fast, it's ridiculous. Here, we take down Team Rocket, Jesse, and James and make our way to Giovanni just as Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout is fighting the Marowak over in the Lavender Tower. Here against Giovanni, the strategy is just to set up our Double Teams, set up our Swords Dances, and here, we just need to start using Acid to take down his Pokemon. It's not super effective against the Rhyhorn or the Nidoqueen, but with all the stat boosts that we have, it really only takes a few hits, and we are through 
Silphco is done for double team Bellsprout. Here we can see that at the same time that Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout is finishing the Lavender Tower, fighting Jesse and James, Double Team Bellsprout is already taking on Sabrina. And this is not a terribly difficult fight because we can dodge everything. And with all the sword stances, we can just basically one or two shot all of these Pokemon. It's just a matter of our accuracy being lowered that if we take a lucky psychic, we could get knocked out, but no. So sl Sleep Powder Bellsprout is struggling way behind as Double Team Bellsprout is fighting yet another gym leader, Koga. We're 41 minutes into this race here, and the, the difference in actual time between these two is probably close to 15 minutes at this point. It's getting a little ridiculous. Double Team Bellsprout managed to beat Koga on the first attempt. Again, that never happened. And we'll see the times for the Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout later, but these are my best times to this point in the game of all of my runs, period, with this Double Team Bellsprout. It's outperforming the previous Double Team run. It's outperforming everything. It's already here at 45 minutes fighting Blaine. And this one goes super, super easy. We get all the luck, we don't take any hits, and we just blow through him. So we're to Giovanni at the same time that Sleep Powder Bellsprout is fighting against Koga. This is ridiculous. Now, it takes a few attempts for both of these Bell Sprouts because these are really tough battles. Koga uses psychic moves here, and we don't have strong moves against Giovanni because of the strategy that we're using. So, which one is going to finish their gym battle first? Well, here, Double Team is getting pretty close to taking down Needle Queen, and next, Needle Queen com Needle King comes out, and it's taking it down, it's on very low health, but if it just gets the luck to not get hit here by the Rhyhorn, we've saved by the Rhydon. We've saved all of our extra double teams till this point because we level up just before Rhydon. And there we go. We were able to get through. So that is done and done. And we are on to rival six with the double team bell sprout. The Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout is still struggling at Koga. So here we go. We are making our way through Rival 6. And again, we have saved some double teams until we get to the Magneton. That's because we will level up at Magneton every time. So here, just as it looks like maybe Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout is getting a good run against Koga, Yep, it's already to the Venomoth, and there it goes. It's taken Koga down, but at the same exact time, Double Team Bellsprout is fighting against Rival 6. Will this battle be hard enough that it will let the Bellsprout, the Sleep Powder and Growth Bellsprout catch up? We're just going to have to see. Here, the... Double Team Bellsprout has successfully gotten back to Cloyster. It takes Cloyster down. Now it just needs to get set up here on the Magneton. No, it gets taken out. So one more time, let's see if it can get through Rival 6. It's making its way through Sand Slash. That's good. And it's taking down the Execute. That's super easy. We take out Cloyster. Okay, now we need to get the luck to get through Magneton. Okay, we got it. Now we're setting up double teams here on Kadabra and we take it down and one hit takes out the Flareon. That is it. Double team Bellsprout has already made it to Victory Road in less than one hour. That's the fastest time I've ever posted on this section of the game. Just as this is happening, it's in Victory Road moving around boulders, sleep powder and growth, Bellsprout 
is finally fighting Rival 5. It's slowly whittling him down, but it's got so much game to make up from here. We've made it to Cloyster, we put it to sleep, and now we're spamming some of our growths. Okay, Acid is going to take that one down. Here, we've put to sleep the Magneton. We take it out, we take out Kadabra, or we get taken out by Kadabra, oh no. So one more attempt, here we are. We are setting up on the Sand Slash. So we put it to sleep, we set up our Swords Dances, we set up some of our growths. Here we put to sleep the Cloister, and we take it down little by little, if we can just keep it asleep, there we go. Now we one-shot the Magneton, one-shot the Kadabra, and here we have to put asleep and take out the Flareon. Finally, at 54 minutes, Sleepy Bell Sprout has managed to beat Rival 5. It's moving on to Giovanni. Here, the strategy is simple. We're going to put to sleep the Nidorino. We're going to set up our three sword stances, and then we're going to be able to sweep through until we get here to the Rhyhorn. This is where we want to set up growth now in order to get badge boosts. And that's because we leveled up after the Persia. So here we go, we're slowly taking it down and we put the Nido Queen to sleep and we get the luck. Here we go. All right, finally it's through, but we can see that Double Team Bellsprout has already made it to Bruno. No, it's already made it to Agatha at this point as Sleepy Bellsprout is starting to fight against Sabrina. Now, it's important to note, we are not saving between Elite Four members here. So, our Sleepy Bellsprout does have a chance to catch up. It's not a great chance, but it does have a chance. So, what can we do here? Well, we have to see if we can get enough luck to catch up. Against Sabrina, we put Kadabra to sleep and we get our setup done and we are able to one-shot Kadabra and Alakazam. Here, we can see that we have finally completed that section, but our times are way behind the Double Team Bellsprout. But it looks like Double Team Bellsprout is having some trouble at the Elite Four, so it's giving us a chance to catch up. Sleepy Bellsprout is now taking on Blaine. It gets set up on the Ninetales, and now it's made its way to the Rapidash. We've put it to sleep. We're doing some of our setup here. We take that one down. And we just need to get the luck to get through Arcanine. And we get it. Okay. So this is starting to heat up. If Double Team Bellsprout can't finish this soon, we might actually start to knot this thing up here. So moving on to Giovanni. It takes tons of attempts because this... Doug Trio can use Fissure, it can use Earthquake, it can use Dig, and those can all one-shot us if we don't have any setup done, but we get a run where we get through. Now here, Nido King and Nido Queen will only use Tail Whip on Bellsprout. They think that all the other moves that they have are resisted, so because of that, we actually get badge boosts from them. So we're just going to take those badge boosts. Here we level up on the Rhydon, but we put it to sleep. Now we're going to set up our growths in order to get our badge boosts. And if we can just keep it asleep, we're going to be able to use Acid to whittle it down little by little. I know Acid seems like a terrible strategy here. We're doing this to keep a level playing field, to keep them both doing the same thing so that we can really assess sleep versus double team. But there we go. Sleepy Bellsprout has finally made it through the all eight gyms, and is on to rival six. Here, we put the Sand Slash to sleep. We're gonna set up some of our growths so that we can resist an attack from the Cloister. And we're going to take that one down. It's easy against Execute. And now we need to put Cloister to sleep and take it out. There we go. Now we can do a little bit more setup here on the Magneton after we put it to sleep is just because of level manipulation and then it's easy to one shot Kadabra and it's a couple shots but we take out the Flareon. 
there we go. It's an hour and 17 minutes in, but that's pretty in line with the three test runs. So getting to Victory Road at this point is actually pretty reasonable. And we can see here that at an hour and 28 minutes, these two runs are actually sitting in the exact same place, fighting Lorelei. We just saw Sleepy Bellsprout had its first run at Agatha that ended in failure. So it's really from now, just which one can get the luck to get through. We're using the same strategy, the same levels, the same moves, with the only exception being double team versus sleep and growth. That fourth move on the double team Bellsprout stun spore is never used. We do not use that in any of these battles, okay? So here we can see that Sleepy Bellsprout just beat Lorelei. And it's going to now be able to heal up and move on to Bruno. And this might be the upset incoming. Both of these have to finish the Elite Four one after the other with no saving in between. If they fail, they have to go back to Lorelei. That's how I've been doing this this entire time because we want to test and see which one is actually going to get you to the end of the game most consistently, most reasonably. Here, we are using Mimic against Bruno, and we're mimicking Dig. So once we get Dig, and once we get all our setup done, his entire team is an easy sweep. We've got three Swords Dances plus six badge boosts on top. So we can take him down. Now, we can see that Double Team Bellsprout has also made it to Bruno. So this could be neck and neck going forward. There it goes. It's taken down Bruno too. Both of them are moving on to Agatha, but Sleepy Bellsprout is just a little ahead. So here, the strategy against Agatha. We want to put the Gengar to sleep. We want to mimic Lick. I know that she can switch in her uh, Golbat, which has wing attack and uh, leech life, but those moves are not strong enough to be able to get through, even with all of our Sword Stance is set up. But we see there that Golbat gets a lucky hit and takes out Double Team Bellsprout. So it's back to the beginning, but Sleepy Bellsprout is sweeping through Agatha's team. One more Pokemon to go, and it does it. It takes down the Gengar, and it's moving on to Lance. This is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so... Sleepy Bellsprout is healing up now. Double Team Bellsprout is going back right now to take another shot at Bruno. But this could be the huge upset incoming. So we put the Gyarados to sleep and now we're going to mimic Hyper Beam after we do all of our setup. Hyper Beam is super strong. It's 150 base power. And if you knock your opponent out, you don't have to recharge. We are one-shotting all of Lance's Pokemon, even the Aerodactyl, with Hyper Beam, and Sleepy Bellsprout is the first one to make it to the champion. And at the same time, Double Team Bellsprout takes a lucky hit from Matt Machamp and gets knocked out and back to Lorelei. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. So here, at an hour and 31 minutes, our Sleepy Bell Sprout has made it to the champion. It puts the Sand Slash to sleep. It's setting up. It's going to mimic Earthquake here. The idea is that Earthquake is strong against most of the rival's team. The only Pokemon that are going to take multiple hits are going to be Exeggutor and Cloyster. So here against the Exeggutor, we put it to sleep. And we are going to Earthquake it down. We use Earthquake on Magneton. We put Cloyster to sleep. It's a lucky one shot there. And then we take out Flareon. Sleepy Bellsprout has finished at one hour and 32 minutes. It has made it through the entire game. That is the fastest time in all of my test runs by far. Even faster than the first test run where we were saving between Elite Four members. Here at an hour and 34 minutes, Sleepy Bellsprout is taking on Mewtwo. And 
All it needs to do is win this fight, and that will be the end of the challenge. It puts it to sleep. We're using growth. We've set up Swords Dance, and we are going to mimic Swift. If it can just stay asleep long enough that we can use Swift, there we go. At an hour and 34 minutes and 31 seconds, we have beaten Mewtwo with the Sleepy Bellsprout. Yeah, it says an hour 34 and 37 seconds. It just took me a little longer to hit stop on the timer. But that is ridiculous. From 25 minutes behind Double Team, Sleep Powder has now beaten Double Team to the end of the game. Here, finally, at nearly two hours in, we're starting another good run with the Double Team Bellsprout. We are taking out Lorelei, and now it's on to Bruno. We got to do this one after the other after the other. We're using the same strategy. I looked really hard into where we level up, where to use our rare candies, exactly which move to mimic off of each opponent. And the strategy clearly works. We got our best finish time ever with Sleepy Bellsprout by using this strategy. So we know that it's gonna work. It's just how many attempts is it gonna take Double Team Bellsprout to get through? Well, here we have gotten Dig, we've gotten all our setup off. It's an easy sweep as long as we don't critical hit. That's one of the big factors here. When we critical hit, we give our opponents a chance to hit us. And that's why Double Team Bellsprout has really struggled here. Everything in the Elite Four can basically one-shot us because we don't have any defenses. We're on zero DVs and minimum battles, so we're under-leveled. They can just knock us out. You get a wing attack from Golbat, you get a strength from a champ, and done. You're out of there. So here, we're fighting against Agatha now. We're going to set up our double teams first and foremost to make ourselves able to dodge. We're going to mimic Lick. And here, one of the other reasons why we often lost at Agatha was because we hit ourselves in confusion after setting up Sword Stance. But in this one, we're able to get the luck to get through the first three Pokemon. There goes Arbok. And now we connect, no critical hit, and we take out Gengar. Now it's time to take on Lance. And Lance, we know the strategy. We need to level up here to prevent leveling up in the middle of the battle. So we use one rare candy. And now what we need to do is we need to dodge the attacks. We need to not take a Hyper Beam from Gyarados. That's really the most important thing. A Hyper Beam is a one shot on us, okay? But once we get the luck, we can now set up and mimic Hyper Beam and we start sweeping through his team. So here we have finally gotten Double Team Bellsprout to the champion at two hours into the run. Our Sleepy Bellsprout has already been done for 25 minutes, <laughs> just for reference. So here we're going to use the same strategy. We're going to set up on the Sand Slash because it will only use Poison Sting, which is the weakest possible move at this point in the game. 15 base power, and it's only neutrally effective, and we can't be poisoned. So we're going to set up our double teams and swords dances here. We're going to set up swords dance first, and then double team on top of that to further boost our attack with badge boosts. Then we can start one shot sweeping through the opponents. It's two shot here on Exeggutor. One shot on Magneton. It's going to take one shot there on the Cloister and one shot on Flareon. Done and done. Finally, at two hours and one minute, we have finished the champion. Now, it's time to take on Mewtwo. And Mewtwo is much, much harder here because it uses Swift. So even as we're trying to set up our double teams and set up our boosting moves with Sword Stance, it's just hitting us and taking us out. The other issue is that we can't put it to sleep, which means that it can use Recover and just heal the damage that we do to it each time. We finally get a lucky run where we don't take any hits and we're able to get through the Mewtwo. 
two hours and 12 minutes into the run. So how did these two runs do? Well, in the end, Sleep Powder and Growth was so much stronger than Double Team. It was kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Like, think about that. Double Team is supposedly this incredibly broken move, and it was for certain parts of the run. For example, it did really well when our opponents took multiple turns to knock us out. It did really well in spots where we had an easy setup of Pokemon. Uh, Sand Slash just using Poison Sting, for example. But this strategy completely fails at the end of the game. Why does it fail? Well, because basically we need one of four things to happen for Double Team to be effective. Either the opponents can't knock us out easily, they can't one-hit KO us, they use non-damaging moves, which lets us set up, we can outspeed them and hit them hard after we set up Double Team, or we need our opponents to be on a timer, using something like Toxic, Leech Seed, Burns, something that saps their health away every single turn. Double Team is really bad when we have lower levels and can be one-hit KO'd. It's really bad when our opponents only use attacking moves. It's really terrible when our opponents carry Swift. Swift is 60 base power, so two Swifts is like taking a Mega Kick. Think about that. Finally, if we don't have any good opportunities to set up, we just get knocked out way too often. Even with six double teams, it's a 25% chance to get knocked out. So in the end, was double team so overpowered? Not really. We found that Sleep Powder was the much stronger play, and in the end, it was the champion. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We'll be back maybe with more tests like this, but for now, you can check out this video over here where I took a Mewtwo and I fought every single major battle with a different move. Check that out right over here, and I will see you in the next one. Later.